Pakistan. So, thank, thank you, Solène, for being here. The recording is started. Take it away. Okay. So today I will uh, just introduce you to CubeOS. It's a Linux-based system that is a bit different. So here's a nice logo, and their motto is a reasonably secure operating system. You can find this their website at this address. And a few facts about it. It's open source. It's security and privacy oriented. It's based on Linux plus Zen for virtualization. And it's just not only for security specialists or journalists, but it can be used by developers or just people on their home computer. So a few things to explain what CubeOS is. It's a Linux distribution for workstations, so it's not meant to be used uh, on a phone or on servers. And by workstation, I just mean something you use to produce content. It can be a laptop or a desktop. Uh, they are just workstation. Uh, everything you do in CubeOS should be done in a virtual machine. So this presentation will be about how cubes works with virtual machines because it's not really easy to work usually with many virtual machines. And for that, it has a lot of tooling to make the virtual machines well integrated into your desktop. And after thinking about that, maybe this could be called a meta operating system because it can allow you to use multiple operating system at the same time, um, if you use CubeOS, in the end, you are not really using CubeOS, but the VMs, you are just running on it. Uh, I need to explain a, a few words to continue, so it would be easier with some vocabulary from the start. Uh, we have DOM0, which refers to the hypervisor. It just CubeOS starting on your computer with its kernel and holding, managing the display. By default, it's not connected to the internet on CubeOS, and you just use it for displaying and using your keyboard. We have templates, which are CubeOS created operating system which come with uh, a lot of default to integrate with Cubes OS and the desktop. And after, with the template, we create things named Cubes or AppVM, which use that template to get the whole system, but just have a few tiny extra settings uh, compared to the template. And if you make a change in an AppVM or cube that is outside the home directory, it won't persist after boot because everything outside home is just taken from the template every time. We will have more information about templates and cubes later. Uh, disposable is uh, a template you have but won't be persistent, so it's just a one-shot VM. We will refer to HVM and PV, so it's virtualization techniques. I don't know how to say. So HVM is um, hardware assist virtualization. So you have your whole kernel and system that is virtualized. It's mostly how we do virtualization usually. And we have PV, which is not specific to Xen, but an important feature of Xen that allows you to run um, a virtual machine, but with a specific Xen kernel that is compatible with the Xen host. And you don't have to virtualize all the system. It's not a container, but it's 
between a container and a VM because it doesn't virtualize everything. And we will refer a lot about pass-through, uh, which consists of passing something from the host to a VM. <coughs> so let's uh, take a look at CubeOS architecture. So it starts with uh, a Xen hypervisor, which is DOM0, which has a few disposable um, cubes here. One is named SysUSB, there are SysNet and SysFirewall, where these three are very important because SysUSB just have a pass-through with all your USB controllers and it will manage everything connected to USB. So it can be your keyboard, mouse, um, headset, literally everything connected to USB will attach to this VM and not to the host. This is due to Xen being able to have um, a very effective device pass-through. And so SysUSB will just have all the USB controller attached here. <clears throat> in the same kind, we have SysNet, which inherits all the network device from the computer and receive them. So here we can see just Wi-Fi and Ethernet. And this is connected to Sys Firewall, which is just uh, something that it used for NAT and extra firewall rules you can write. So these three are very important and require to have a, let's say, working computer with internet connection. And then you have the templates VM. So officially there are Fedora, Debian and Unix that are managed. And you can also have a Windows 7 VM as a template, but ob obviously it's not official. And these templates can be used by hub VMs, which are just VM using a template and they have their own persistent home directory. <coughs> so basically you just create a VM, pick one of these as a template and you start it and you have uh, a new virtual machine that is just independent of everything else. And it's almost instant to create because everything is already in the template. And if you want to have uh, the same set of programs, you can just install everything in the templates and this will provide your software in every app VM here. And we have those things on the left. I prefer not to talk about them. Uh, KVM is a work in progress to detach display from the host into a specific VM, but it's still not working well. And admin VM is just a middleware that just connect to the internet to receive updates without connecting the DOM0 directly. <clears throat> and we see we have a nice color system here. So it go from safe from to unsafe. And in KubeOS, when you create a, a cube, which is uh, just a VM in KubeOS, you have to assign it a color. And then everything display from this VM will just be colored with this. Uh, in the title bar in your desktop. So by default, you have just the red thing yeah, you shouldn't trust. And the black thing, they're usually just not connecting to the internet. And as you can see here, AppVM2 doesn't have a link to any kind of network. And you have this thing, AppVM3, which is Wonix. Um, Wonix is um, an open source project uh, reusing Debian as a base to provide a safe Tor network and Tor browser and just a lot of settings to protect privacy. And you can just choose 
here which pipe you connect your app VM to which network. So here, this one is connected to Tor, so it will use Tor for getting out. But you could just use this and connect it to CIS firewall to get uh, without Tor, but more on this later. Okay, there is a question. No, every process are not in a container, but uh, I don't think it would be really usable. So how does it feel to use uh, CubeOS? It feels a bit like this. So you are just safe in your laboratory and you can put your hands in something that you don't really trust and you don't really want to touch it directly. And you can just burn everything inside. You just don't care because it won't affect the box just next to you or your whole house. So you have your own lab and you can just make experiments safely without affecting or taking risk with your production system. Uh, I found a website with a few screenshots because it's actually hard to get meaningful screenshots. So here is a screen of the Cube Manager tool and you can see all the cubes existing. And if they are template of, or using a template, you can see the colors here. You can see which network they are using. So for example, the vault doesn't have any network, while um, this one is using Onix to get network and everything else is just default. Uh, you can have last time you did a backup of this um, if this is a disposable template. So it's not, you don't have to use any common line except for installing software in a template maybe, but usually it just works everything from a graphical interface. Uh, another screenshot just shows a menu. By default, you have an XFCE desktop. So this is just a quite simple menu, but everything is organized per AppVM. So from here in the domain, you can have AppVM. Here you can have a disposable. So every time you start something from this menu, this will create a new VM that won't be persistent at all. You have those three, well, it's uh, there is no sys USB here, but uh, the special cubes for CubeOS and all the templates you can just start independently if you want to make change in the template. So it's just super easy because if you want to start something from a, an app VM, you just have a proper menu for that. And last screenshot, just showing how the file manager in an app VM can be used. Uh, you have extra functionalities here. And if you right click on a file, you can just copy or move it to another app VM. And when you do so, it ends up in a special folder named cubes incoming. And inside you have a new directory with the name of the cube it's coming from. So there is no chance a cube can create a file and replace it um, on the remote system. And it also won't falsify a file that could have been copied from a specific cube because every file copied this way um, and with a specific name from the origin. And you have also specific disposable um, menu, which are very handy if you want to open something and you are not really sure it's safe, like a PDF named I love you, which was a common virus in early 20. So you can just right click, edit disposable VM, and it will be copied to a disposable that it starts just for you. And when you are done, it just burn everything. And this is using a specific 
then fail to, to allow passing information from a VM to another, and you have a specific RPC uh, protocol in cubes to allow stuff from one VM to another, and this can require a user validation from DOM0. So why would you like to use Cubes OS? Uh, from my memory, it's the only operating system which provides everything to have your digital life and project or clients or work separate. And it does efficiently and it's not a pain to use. I think there is Spectrum OS that is getting developed. It's used based on NixOS. I think it's interesting to follow, but it's not really just a proof of concept at the moment. From last time, I've took a look. It has innovative setups, which are named Split GPG or Split SSH. Um, so basically what happens if you go back to the architecture display, you would have in a split SSH setup, your SSH key in your KeyPass database and KeyPass can act as an SSH agent. So it doesn't have any network. You can just not do anything except running KeyPass and just do stuff locally. And with some glue in a uh, Xen, we can allow an app VM to request through DOM0 to access the socket here with user validation every time. And this is use this use socket to connect um, a Unix pipe a Unix socket to another Unix socket through the RPC mechanism. And then this can just allow using on demand your SSH key. So if ABM get compromised, your SSH key isn't there. And if someone wants to use the SSH key, like trying to run a rogue script in a install script maybe, uh, you will have a prompt on your hypervisor asking you if you want to allow appvm1 to use the key on appvm2. And if you have no idea why it's asking, this is a good sign something is wrong and you can just deny access. And then you can just remove network from this or make it in emergency pause and then create a dump of memory and analyze everything. But here it's more for security forensics. But if something bad happens, you have all the tools to just freeze everything and just analyze later with someone with proper knowledge and tooling. And for split GPG, it just works the same, but using GPG instead of SSH. I like CubeOS because it has been designed to be used in the real world because sometimes you just need your client wants them to wants you to run a, a proprietary VPN or just use weird software that is not packaged and it's always not very good with regard to security to install stuff on your computer that you just don't really trust. And if you do so in a VM, it can just be complicated to work because your VM is just not meant to be used as your desktop. So Cubes OS is just designed to play well with real world needs. And I've learned that recently by experience, but with the use of templates and snapshot for the backend, disk backend, it makes it super reliable and flexible 
because if you update a template, uh, CubeOS always keeps the last change since, since boot as a separate disk. And when you boot a second time, this disk gets merged with the main disk and a new disk is created as a separate disk. So this is just um, funny things happening behind the scene in the hypervisor. But what is important to remember is if you boot something, make change, you can shut down and revert all the change of the last boot. This can be configured to uh, how many last boots you want, but it has some performance issue because the hypervisor has to just stack all the extra disk that are not merged with the main one. It, it's not super useful anyway to keep them up to last 10 boot. But I think it's a really nice mechanism that you can just easily roll back your last change. And when I say flexible, this is because you can use Fedora or Debian. And if you use Fedora to work and you need the Debian package, you can just shut down your app VM, change the template to Debian, just boot again and you change your OS in uh, a few seconds and you still have everything you need to work. Um, to give a, a better picture of how to use it in everyday life, I'm sharing how I use it personally on my personal computer. So I use a few templates. By default, you have a Fedora 38 with XFCE. And I installed it a few extra packages on it, like Firefox, Evolution, uh, Git, and a, a few tools. I keep uh, another stock Fedora 38 template with no extra package in it. Um, and it's only for these specific internal cubes. I do it just for optimization. So I can just make change to this one without affecting the very important ones here. And this could also reduce memory because if I install some services, they may start in here and you just always have this free warning. So you can just wait easily a few hundred megabytes of memory. I keep uh, a Debian 11 around because it's always useful for me to try sometimes installing uh, a deb package to see if it's working. And I also use Wonix because sometimes it's just super effective and useful to have a Tor network around, especially if you take train. Sometimes I just don't trust, trust uh, public Wi-Fi. And what's cool is CubeOS internally use salt stack uh, configuration deployment tool to manage everything. And you just have some specific area you can use to write custom salt config, salt. And you can declaratively manage all your templates or even hub VM using salt. So if you don't know salt, it's a bit like Ansible or Puppet or Chef. And it, it use um, a client server model with an agent. But I like this way of using a proper tool to just configure my system. And if something is wrong, I can just delete it or revert or use a backup or install it again or make a clone before making huge change. And everything is saved here with all the change I want to make. And I can just accumulate stuff over time. And if I need to migrate to a new system, I can reuse all my config file. So this reminds me a bit Nixos declarative way, even if it's still not um, equivalent, it's still um, something great to have. And here are some cubes example I'm using. So I have four network, 
which is the default network of my home, a VPN network with a VPN provider, Ronix, which is Tor, and just no network. So I separate, uh, let's say, life into web browsing, emails and communication, development, and I have an extra open BSD VM, which doesn't integrate well because it's not an official template. And it's using uh, the HVM system to be running. So it just show has a big window with everything displayed inside. Uh, yeah, I didn't say that before, but when you start uh, a program here, you just have a single window and not just the whole desktop of each VM displayed. So if you start uh, just files here, you just get a new window with, with what you ask, and you don't have to run XFCE or a desktop or window manager in each. So that's why I think it integrates well, because it just windows and not just big windows with windows inside. And I like to have disposable web browser. Sometimes I need to check if something is available from which some country because it works for me, but it doesn't work for someone else. And sometimes some research are interesting. Um, it, sometimes it's useful to use Tor from some search. Um, without network, I have my vault with password and SSH keys and GPG and everything. And just some office document I'm writing or gathering over time. Although there are some issues with KubeOS, it's not perfect. I think the main issue is you don't have any GPU acceleration in cubes because they don't have direct access to the GPU. Uh, this is by design for security um, reason. There is a on working, on progress work to allow GPU acceleration, but it's not ready yet. Of course, if you have two GPU, you could just assign a GPU to a VM, and then it just work on that GPU. So you would have an extra monitor to that GPU, and you would have to connect a specific keyboard and mouse and assign it to that VM. So basically, you can just turn your computer into uh, a multi-computer, but you just need a lot of hardware in it. One issue is also then which you build on top of Linux, reduce compatibility because you have a Xen Linux kernel and not just a Linux kernel. Um, usually it breaks with suspend and resume or some performance. Or in many ways we can just imagine. So um, the community is keeping a list of hardware compatibility um, with many information. So what's working, what's not when it was test. So if you want to buy a new hardware for Cubes OS, uh, at least you have some list of things that are known to work. Uh, an issue is that because everything is separate, it can be hard to just find your stuff or remember when, where you did something. So you need some discipline and routine to know everything. And if you also like to mess with your template, uh, you can just easily break all your system, but you need a bit of knowledge to understand what you are doing, obviously. And this can, there is a learning curve, which I maybe didn't felt much because I'm used to have 
many computers and with many operating systems, but it seems it can be complicated to understand the relationship between every component. But the good news is there is a good documentation. Sometimes it's a bit outdated. Um, you have to find a workaround on the community, but usually it's good and everything is explained and you have graphical application, which are for class citizen for handling everything. So why it's a cons, it's still nice to have documentation. Um, now I would just share about various cube stuff uh to go more in details so you have this net it's a specific vm as we saw at the beginning which is disposable by default and it just attached to all your network interface so if you plug your ethernet cable this goes to sysnet if you want to connect to wi-fi you have um, network manager this tray applet to to handle this. Um, if you want, for example, to remember your Wi-Fi credentials, you have to not make it disposable, but an app VM to store things uh, like credential, password correctly. We have that specific USB uh, VM, which get uh, USB controllers. Um, I think it's something that could be improved a lot in Cubes West, but by default, you don't have direct access to your USB. You need to use a USB pass-through, which is a program in SysTray that just lists you everything connected to USB and on which VM you want to connect it. So at the moment, I'm speaking to you with uh, my Bluetooth headphone connected on USB, which is passed uh, uh, through CSUSB to the VM for work. And um, it's working fine, but if you want some high throughput uh, device like NVMe external storage, it's just super slow. And it's also used a lot of CPU, but it's meant to first be able to use USB device in uh, cubes, but also be able to connect untrust um, USB device such as memory sticks, and you can open them in disposable and just copy stuff to a VM safely. Uh, there is a disk revert feature. So basic, but at the moment, Cubeless is using LVM to manage all the disk for the VMs. So it's using the snapshot system to create a temporary disk and allow you to revert up to one or two times. And then sometimes it merges snapshot and create a, a newer snapshot. They work in progress to use BTRFS or ZFS to do that because LVM isn't the greatest tool for this. It works, but now we just have better file system to handle that. Um, I just found this feature by mistake because I wanted to make uh, revert a change I made in a template because I made a mistake and I found this exists and it was just super cool. And I found it also work with my open BSD VM. So I was able to use um, a development version that was known to not work, but see exactly how it's not working and then just revert in second. And it was just faster than copying my uh, 60 gigabyte VM disk as a backup. The update process is super easy. So you have something in your sys tray that tells you have an update and it will check updates in each template and the DOM zero. And if you want to update, it creates 
a disposable with which downloads the package and then start the template and then exchange the file to the template so it's not directly connected to the internet and then it uses salt to organize everything and basically after an update you are told if you have some cubes that are using a template which change since you start the cube and this means if you want the change to be um, live in your cube you need to restart them and still no no cli involved here and as i said everything is used with salt and it's super easy to extend your current system with salt with uh, which template should have which package and you could even pin package version and create rules and prepare default file or dot file it's a super nice way to extend your system programmatically and we have cubed rpc so it's for a remote protocol communication um it's quite complicated to share about i think but it's a mechanism that allows an app vm to communicate with another app vm but you have dom zero that has rules to tell who has right to do what with who um a nice example would be to have an RPC for open URL, which exists by default. And basically, you can use an app VM, tell it to open a, a link, and it will ask DOM0 to open that link on the web browsing or any other app VM. So you can just have links of all your cubes opening in the same destination cube. You just have to validate um, the RPC request every time. So it could be seen as not convenient, but at least you have a nice way to easily open something from one app VM to the other. And colors, I think it's, it's fun something nice you can easily tag um, each cube with a dedicated color and all the icons will have that color i just don't know how they did it but it works and it's quite cool the c stray icons will inherit this color as well so if you have a network a vpn uh, cube with a network manager applet and it's green. You just, we just have the icon that will be green. And so if you have a lot of windows from different cubes, it's uh, a nice way to easily know if something you can trust or if you can remind which color it is. And also in titles of the windows, you have the name of the cube. So it's not hard to remember um, where you are working currently. So, do we have any questions? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I'm curious about um, why CubeOS restricts itself only to workstations. I, I have the impression like many of those isolation features would be useful also for some kind of automated tasks. Um, but maybe there's better solutions to that, right? I mean, I can imagine like, I don't know, some kind of just making stuff up an ETL process that pulls from probably possibly unreliable sources, but outputs safe data, like a CSV file or something, but you want to run this in like an encapsulated environment or something. Mm, this is an interesting question. I don't really know the answer, but I know KubeOS wants First, to provide a, a safe desktop workstation. And most of the work done is for integration. 
And I think it's just not hard to use something like Proxmox to manage all your virtual machines. And then you could use NFS or SSH to exchange data between uh, all your VMs. Okay, so the advantage here really is, or what this makes then special is really like the desktop aspect, you know, different colors, easy, I don't know, yeah. uh, file sharing yeah. and things, um, where there are I'm trying... probably technical solutions to orchestrating like your own set of VMs to do automated stuff. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to implement something a bit lighter, like which looks like uh, Cubes OS, but doing so on OpenBSD, and I realized the huge work done on Cubes OS. Just, it's super complicated to just have a right click, move this file to this other VM, because it's not even done through network in Cubes OS. Um, you have uh, a save validation from the user in DOM0, and um, it's a lot of work. Uh, it just done well, in my opinion. And there are a lot of things like that, like even the USB pass-through has been developed by the Cubes OS team because you don't have anything existing to allow you to do that graphically in just two click. Okay. Um if I may, another quick question. So you said earlier, um, it's like difficult to have good screenshots. <laughs> Is this a yeah. security uh, feature? <laughs> I mean, oh no, I'm it just does, like you know, uh, you could have probably demoed like your CubeOS, like what you run, <laughs> but maybe CubeOS just doesn't allow taking screenshots for you know. No, you can take reasons. screenshots, but for example, if I share my screen. I would just share my app VM because I can't. I have no way to show DOM zero from here. I can just physically ah, yeah. display DOM zero. Or I could okay, that's use. Interesting, yeah. yeah, but uh, also it it just contains many data and weird naming in French. <laughs> that's why I didn't take uh, pictures myself. Okay, cool. Thanks. So, no other question? Good. Yeah. Microphone on. I, I do have one question that I've been asking myself, uh, which is who is the intended user of, uh, of QDOS? Mm. This isn't this isn't meant to be an attack, but I just want to know what they where they are going. Um, I think the target audience is people who care about security. Uh, really care about security. Like it makes sense to not store your SSH and GPG key on the same host that you use for running code you don't trust. Um, I think also it's used a lot by people using cryptocurrency because they can also have their wallet uh, offline. But not only for security, it's also practical if you work for multiple clients because you can have a um, specific tool in each VM for each client. And if you are done with a client, you just make a backup, store it for a long time. And if you work on that project again, you can just restore it from backup. Um, while I love backups, when I need to restore a backup, it's always a pain because I'm not sure what changed and what I need to restore and restoring everything is always a pain. But in that case, if you just have a specific subset of something to restore, it makes a lot more sense 
to separate everything. Of course, uh, the, the compartmentalization is very highly user dependent. Some people may just like having disposable Tor VM because they just care about privacy. And people may just have one or two app VM. Just one wouldn't make much sense, but I don't know. And it's why I think it's a meta operating system because it provides you all the toolings to run what you want and run it well. You have almost no performance penalty if you don't use GPU, of course. And it's quite amazing. But then it's a user to know what to do with it. As I said, you can just have your own lab. Um, earlier, I was just able to, this morning, in a few seconds, I've been able to start a fresh Debian VM, install Nix and report. It's working fine on fresh install. And it was just a disposable VM. So closing the last window of this VM just destroyed it. And I think this kind of things is pretty cool. If you want to try a software, you don't have to compromise your home, or at least take the risk to compromise your home. Uh, no extra file lying around in your .config or .local. Um, it just keeps things clear clean, safe. So I don't know who is the audience, but I think it's not a specific audience, but it's more matching some kind of people's mindset. OK. Thank you. I think I read on the Cuboys website that like a potential possibly already existing biggest user group are like, for example, journalists, which work with like highly sensitive data or something. Um, yes, but there's already, but, for example, tales in that space, because yeah. that's what I was thinking is how they. Yeah, I think tales is meant to be used as a live CD and it's just tour and privacy oriented. But KubeOS is meant to have a working system with persistency. Otherwise, you just use a, a live CD. And it, it's also very practical because uh, it has some Windows integration. So for some people who has to experiment with Linux and Windows, you have a more integrated window to work with. Yeah, there are crazy people around building stuff for Windows. Okay, so if there are no more questions, I think we can finish it for today. Thank, thank you very much for attending this. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. I spent a lot of time to prepare <laughs> and I was very happy to share it with you with the uh, last knowledge sharing. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks, Alain. <laughs>